This is one of the downsides of democracy, is when we let the people choose, sometimes the people don't choose how we think would be best. Welcome back to Privy. Privy is a podcast about bathrooms, recorded from my home bathroom. I'm your host, Hunter Hoover, and I love bathrooms. It's good to be back in what is hopefully a more regular and trying to keep it a little more fresh uh, recording-wise. I, I, I admit I pre-recorded quite a few um, episodes as I was returning to school, and the, the season of fall moving into the Christmas season is busy at the church, and I had a few pre-recorded, and those have expired with the end of spoop key season. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, but as we move into the end of the year here, uh, I'm going to try to my one of my goals for 2023 is to uh, maybe just prioritize my time in such a way where I am able to record it a little more fresh. So that way you're not getting like two month old bathroom reports much late. So that said, recently, speaking of bathroom reports, I know we were speaking of it. Uh, recently, I found out firsthand uh, what happens when you eat a four to eight month old frozen Olive Garden dinner. Um, so when we go to Olive Garden, my family and I, we, we are Olive Garden frequenties, uh, if you will. And one of the things that we do when we go to Olive Garden is we will regularly purchase a take-home meal that we will then freeze for a lunch or a very simple to warm up meal later on in our lives. Well, and my parents often they they put in these special orders and they'll, you know, they they hook us up pretty sweet. But we had placed one of these a while back, like probably February. Um, at the time that you're hearing this, that will be nine months ago. Uh, and so in the bottom of our like chest freezer in our garage sat one of these Olive Garden dinners. And me returning to the school, as I said, I will regularly like walk out into the garage, like pop open the chest freezer and go rifling through there to see if I can find an Olive Garden dinner. Well, I did find this one, and it was at the very bottom. And I'm more than confident that this was placed in our freezer at the beginning of 2022, at the latest, late 2021. My heart and my gut tell me that this was probably in there about February. So that's what I'm going to operate on that assumption. But anyway, I took this to the school, and I warmed it up, and... I'll tell you what, it tasted delicious. The The flavor was unabated, but the degree to which it ran through me, um, it was very fast. Like we're talking like Olympic sprinter speed levels of fast moving through my bowels. So to that end, what I would share here, we're moving into a season of thankfulness. and And I think that we're going to arrive back home, if you will, for a sense of what Privy is all about. And what I want to tell you is, if you are in the market for a laxative, and you have eight to nine months to spare before you will need said laxative, it may be more cost-effective to buy an Olive Garden dinner and freeze it for, let's say, four to eight months and then consume it in one sitting. I know, not it's not a one serving situation. It's two, but one sitting. And, and I'm pretty confident that that $5, $6 take home is probably cheaper than a lot of laxatives. It, and I promise you, tested and verified, it will get the job done. In fact, I have another, huh, right at the top of the show here, I have another just, what are we doing? You know, sometimes there's these moments, and well, it's a hunter's anecdotes to keep you afloat. There's 
There's a few moments in our lives where we're staring down at something and we're wondering, what are we doing? Do you know what I mean? Like, there, there's often times where I'll make specific, eh, less than adult choices. And I'm going, oh man, like this was a bad idea. Well, to tell you this, to give you this Hunter's anecdotes, we got to back up. And I promise it's this has to do with the bathroom. <laughs> oh, does it ever. But but we have to back up to about early September, mid-September. And what happens in mid-September, especially here in the Pacific Northwest, is there's this thing that I like to call pumpkin spice fever. Now, I'm not going to disparage any specific demographic of human being, but like, let's just say there is a specific demographic of, I don't know, whitish female that just kind of gravitates toward pumpkin spice. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I don't enjoy a pumpkin spiced something or another. I do. The pumpkin pie Kit Kats that Kit Kat put out this year, shout out to those. I probably bought eight to ten bags of those. They're delicious. And so I'm not disparaging the pumpkin spice life, but what I am going to kind of make a comment on here, and this, this is not a take because everybody's had this take, but that is the pumpkin spice thing is kind of getting out of hand. And this is kind of known, and everybody kind of has this in the back of their brain that like, you know, they got pumpkin spice dog food, for goodness sakes. I guarantee you they have it. I don't know that they have it, but I guarantee you that they do have it. Like, that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So one of the things that, I, so I'm on the internet and I am scrolling through and, and Facebook, you know, they've got my number. These ads on Facebook got my number. And in the ad on, because they've heard me rant about this, and in the ad on Facebook pops up pumpkin spice deodorant. Now, I'm not going to, if you want to know which deodorant brand is, you can go putz around on the TikToks and Instagrams for me. But let's just say a, and this is important, but a, a all natural deodorant brand released a deodorant that was pumpkin spice flavored. And I made a video just commenting like, what are we even doing? Like, have we, have we not gone too far? Well, this deodorant company, they responded and said, well, you should try it. Now, a normal person would read that and they would go, well, they want me to smear this on my underarms and get my snoot in there and smell it. But my ornery self read that comment and went, oh, I'll try it all right, friends. And so my wife and I go to the Target and look for this. First of all, the pumpkin spice variety was discontinued a mere month later. I'm right in the heart of pumpkin spice season as well, but whatever. To be replaced with uh, vanilla toasted marshmallow. I don't know. I'm staring at this tube of deodorant from across the bathroom right now oh also on the floor little little hunter's anecdotes within the hunter's anecdotes here but like there's like a 40 pound bag of bath and body work soap and candles <sighs> so what we my, my wife stocks up on bath and body works home goods and body and hand cleaning products for the year, like we're still working through last year's haul and and bringing in this year's haul, I might add. But so I digress. But this this deodorant is is out of stock. They don't make the pumpkin spice variety. And so I buy the toasted marshmallow vanilla. Now, again, it's deodorant. And so I decide my ornery self is saying, well, you want me to try it? Okay. And so one night, I just took a big bite of it. And I can report it's bad. Um, it, one, does not take taste like... It doesn't taste like marshmallows or vanilla. I can tell you that right now. It makes me wonder if the pumpkin spiced one would. I'm pretty confident I know the answer to that. But what it did taste like was just 
pure awfulness and the texture of like three day old sat out marsh like uh, mashed potatoes. Absolutely heinous. But the worst part was, is it kind of like smashed and then also simultaneously began to like dissolve in my mouth. And so I know I swallowed some of it. But the problem with that was I work at a public high school. So the next day and the nature of my job is the reality is, is if I have to go to the bathroom, I may have to hold my bathrooming one to five hours, depending on the honoriness of the students slash children I work with. And so this day was one of those, oh, we're not going to get to the bathroom immediately. But unfortunately, my innards had been polluted by this deodorant and they are just screaming to be released. Uh, And so what we've learned from the end, a little takeaway for you at the end of this Hunter's anecdote is two things will get the your insides moving in a to a degree that you maybe didn't want. The first is four to eight month old Olive Garden meals. Um, and the second is biting and, and accidentally swallowing some portions of deodorant. Also, um, because I'm, I don't know what the word is. We're going to say deranged. Um, I also took a video of the sounds that this post deodorant deuce made again it's mostly to just like Snapchat buddies and make them have to watch it. Uh, but two funny things came from this. The first is I sent this to my my friend uh, and hopefully soon to be friend of the show, Chris Luckman. Shout out, Chris. And I sent it to him under the pretext that I was texting him. Well, I received a text back saying, hey, I have Chris's phone. What this means is that Chris's lovely wife, Roxanne, had his phone and just received a video of me taking a crap. Now, I didn't make her open it. I, She opened it. Much to her own horror, as it's just audio of me ripping a beefer. And so I then talked m- my wife into watching this video. Having heard the audio, my wife begins to gag to the point of almost throwing up simply by hearing the heinous things that come out of my rear. It's true love. This has been Hunter's Anecdotes to keep you afloat. It is election season. By the time you're hearing this episode, the elections should be done, as long as all these states that huh, figure out how to do math have finished their counting. And we're not, we're not here to talk about whether or not your state's election results came in the way you wanted. Mostly because I don't think I have the emotional stability to do that. But hopefully if you're 18 and up, hopefully you voted. Because, and I'm on record saying this, if you're 18 and up and you didn't vote, you can't complain. Like, it's, it's your fault. Whatever happened, you have no, no say in it. You forfeited your right to vote. And so you don't get to complain. You get to shut up about everything political for the next however many years because you chose not to exercise your right. But... Also, we live in America. If you do not live in America um, and maybe don't have as much say, I'm sorry, you know, but I'm here and we just had a lot of very, very important elections. And so it's on my mind. But we need to discuss democracy because it's it's such a special thing. You know, the people getting to choose and have a voice. It's a pretty good idea. I'm pretty sure it goes back to like the ancient Greeks where they had like the, the forums and all that thing. And they, you know, they discussed and they voted on different things. And it's good because it it allows people to take ownership and interest in their own society and having those those interactions and putting their voice out there in America by way of voting for people who will later vote for you. The whole representatives thing, like I'm not a government teacher. I don't understand all that, but I do understand that I'm represented in Congress. And to my knowledge, I'm not actually represented. Do you know what I'm saying? And representation, wait, no. Taxation without representation is theft. Just let that marinate for you. So, pa-ding. But one of the downsides of democracy, oh boy, here we go. Here comes Hunter's dangerous ideas. But one of the downsides of democracy is sometimes the person... Or the thing that you wanted to pass in vote or win in vote 
sometimes that thing doesn't win. And then you're left with the fallout of coming to terms with that. And so many of you, you know, the release, this, this comes out about five days after most of these election results will have been passed. And so hopefully you have come to grips with whatever hellscape exists now uh, with, with all this. But this is one of the downsides of democracy is when we let the people choose, sometimes the people don't choose how we think would be best. Or in many cases, and in the case we're going to discuss today, sometimes they choose in a way that's just so beyond comprehension. Um, there's been a lot of go- voting going on. And I told you we weren't going to discuss election results, but we do need to discuss one specific election result, and that is the America's Best Restroom 2022. Back in August, um, there was a really important election going on online. Uh, You could vote once per day for your favorite bathroom out of America's Best Restrooms for the year 2022 of our Lord. And, you know, hopefully you voted because if you didn't, it's too late. Now, they are taking nominations for bathrooms for 2023. So if you know of or have a rad public bathroom, might not be a bad idea to nominate that. Um, Now, this year's America's Best Restroom is... It sets a frustrating precedent, but it also comes with me just scratching my head like some sort of grape ape trying to figure out what in the flipping heck happened this year. Like, what happened? Did we all just take a month-long nap? Like, could we not just hit enter and then tell everybody? Or was this all a big ruse? Do you see what I'm saying? So what I'm, what I'm getting at here is... This this voting went live back in August, and we covered most of these bathrooms in our coverage, yearly coverage of the America's Best Restroom competition. Um, and back in September, I, I kind of tipped my hat in this competition, maybe a little too much. I put my opinion out there that I was really hoping for the number five bistro and bar out of Sedalia, Missouri to, to win it. That was my vote. Um, I think I placed a couple votes for a couple others, but mostly pretty much every day I voted for number five Bistro and Bar. Um, if anybody from number five Bistro and Bar, if for some reason hears this, I really liked your bathroom. I thought it was rad. You get the Privy Cast, very rad toilet of 2022 approval. It's not a real thing, and it doesn't come with any sort of prize like Synthesis competition, but I want you to know in your hearts I loved your bathroom. Anyway, we are here to celebrate the winner here on Privy, but but to do so, we need to discuss something because when voting went down in August, uh, it was announced that the the winner would be announced the following month. Now, for those of you who are not using the Julian calendar, the month of September follows the month of August. And by this logic, they would have 30 calendar days to release this information if it's coming out next month. Now, it, the, the results of this competition did not come out in the month of September, which is fine. I'm not like, I'm not like one of these people that's like, I'm, oh, September 31st, if it doesn't come out, I'm going to, te-. like, no. Like, I definitely bothered the Syntis Corporation. Like, I might have sent them some messages and stuff saying, hey, like, when we get in these results, they didn't answer. Um, go figure. But the, the results eventually came out sometime mid-October. But my question is this, why the heck did it take so long? Because these were all digital votes. Like you click on the thing and it puts your vote. I assume they have some sort of like weird spreadsheet. So like, why not just go to the bottom and just like type in a a formula that calculates this? Like, I feel like this, this vote count should have taken one day, not one month let alone almost 50 days. So I think there's something weird going on here. Um, I think, you know, I'm not saying that the Sintus Corporation owes us an explanation because God knows they probably didn't even listen to this anyway. But I would like one. Like, I, I'm, 
like I'll formally ask for one. I'm not, they don't owe it to me, but I will ask for it. So like Sintis, can we get an explanation? What took so long to count these votes? And was there some shady dealings? Because here's my problem. So I want to announce now officially, and, and this is not to dogpile them. We want to celebrate their victory. But the Tampa International Airport, specifically Concourse, Airside Concourse C restrooms, won the America's Best Restroom 2022 award. Now, Tampa International Airport, specifically their Airside C restrooms, edged out the competition. But they didn't, Sintas didn't release any numbers. They didn't say like, Oh yeah, Tampa International Airport won by a landslide. Like, like hundred thousand. Next person up had like ten thousand. We have no idea. Also, it took forever for these these votes to be counted. So who knows how much like hootily pootily happened on these votes? You get some stank on that vote. You know what I'm saying? But we want to celebrate the winner. But so we need to note that the Tampa International Airport won a restroom cleaning service and $2,500 in restroom cleaning products. Now, I want to note to Tampa International Airport's credit, they report that they are going to donate the service to folks impacted by Hurricane Ian. That's awesome. That's a that's a super cool thing to do. Um they are in that community. Their their community was definitely impacted by Ian. Uh and so good on you. Now, that $2500 of cleaning supplies will be great to aid in that. But like it's kind of up to them whether or not they honor the cleaning services thing. Like what is this industrial cleaning services unless they like donate it to other businesses? I don't know. To me it's like I would like to see Tampa International Airport just like give a whole bunch of like relief money instead of this, but they may be doing that. I don't know. This isn't about Tampa International Airport's humanitarian relief efforts. This is about them winning America's Best Restroom. So, and I think it's because I'm a glass half empty slash there's probably a crack in my glass if we're all being honest about it. Hey, that could be the name of like, like... If I ever wrote the most boring memoir in the universe, there's probably a crack in my glass. Not a bad title. Um, But they won for their Terminal C bathrooms. But they that's the bathrooms they won for. And I wonder, and I I need to get down to Tampa's international airports, you know, because I want to know, are they like touting that their bathrooms in general won this? Because they should be very clear. Airside Concourse C bathrooms won this prize. Not all of them. Just those. And that would be some gall. Like, thanks, Sintus. Let's slap a plaque on every bathroom in the airport. No. Also, at the time of, like, researching and making sure that all my ducks were in order... Well, we get the power of the internet. Let's just look right now. Um, Tampa International Airport had not, like put anything on their website as like, oh yeah, we won this prestigious award, Um, which, you know, makes me question how much they even care. And if they don't care that much, how in the freaking heck did they win? You know what I'm saying? The bathrooms that won are very nice. They are. I'm not, I'm not arguing that these are bad bathrooms. What I'm saying is, is are they the best restrooms? I'm going to read this next bit verbatim. This is pulled from uh, the Sintus Corporation's America's Best Restroom 2022 website. It says, The Tampa Tampa International Airport's Airside Sea showcases new, high-design, spacious restrooms coupled with quality craftsmanship and an inviting yet durable material palette. Now, what? Like, I'm sure that means something to somebody, but an inviting yet durable material palette? Does that just mean the countertops don't wear down after gross Dougie sprays hand sanitizer all of them? Like, yeah. The entrance welcomes travelers to their uniquely Florida experience. Now, I've seen this entrance. It's one of these gender-neutral entrances where it's like, which one are you going to take? Um, I will say 
having used one of these restrooms in Seattle, even natural, like people who seem like they were there and live there, they hesitated a moment when you and some, you know, teenage girl are walking towards the same bathroom entrance. It is just kind of uncomfortable. Like, but that's how they've got these things laid out. It boasts, quote, large graphics and a natural deep blue stone. The undulating veining. Ooh, golly, Tampa International. Golly. Undulating veining. Oh, my gosh. Is reminiscent of... Why why vein? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, how many things do you know of that have veins? Hulking strongman necks, your arms prior to... Anyway, it, we're not, no, we have to move on. Um, of waves crashing along the shore. Once inside, large format tiles skin the floors. What the heck? Can I say that the verbiage that they've picked on this bee have just been wild? Seamlessly fold up the walls, bolstering the well-lit environment and furthering a, quote, freshly cleaned aesthetic. A wood-look wall tile adds warmth and softness for a balanced resort-like feel. It's an airport, friends. It's an airport. (laughs) The luxury feel is bolstered by high-res images. I hope so. It's not hard to get a high-res image. Of quintessential Florida Florida flora, back-printed on floor-to-ceiling sheets of impact-resistant glass, ensuring its beauty for your skin. They have big fancy posters behind fancy glass. That's what that sentence said. The clean contemporary aesthetic is completed by light-colored solid surface vanities, which incorporate TPA's signature cockpit concept. This, quote, cockpit, cockpit, provides guests with their own sensor-activating sink and soap, personal paper towel dispensers, and trash receptacle, all within arm's reach. So each sink has its own things there. Cool. We're really putting the adjectives to work in there, aren't we? Uh, So I want to do Tampa International Airport Justice because they did win. And and maybe they're worth looking at. So we need to look at this. So a little history on the Tampa International Airport. So the first Tampa Airport was built in 1952. And within 10 years of its opening... It had served about 1 million passengers a year. So, so much so that talk of a building, a new building began even within 10 years. Later, a a tram and plan for a tram to transport people land side to air side section. So they would have a place where it's like land side where you'd park. And then the tram would transport you across to the air side section where you would board your plane and be air side. Um, these airport shuttles were the first of their kind. They were originally used in the Tampa International Airport. In 1969, construction began. <laughs> anyway, two years later, and the new airport officially opened in April. A cutting-edge FFA, Federal Flyer Association, we're going to go with that, Control Tower was installed the following year and was the highest air control tower in the nation at the time. That same year, they served their four millionth passenger in a year. The airport underwent similar changes as others, international flights, expansions, increased use. And in 1993, the airport was rated the best airport in the United States and conned NAST by conned Nast Magazine. They held a public art project in display in 1999, and by this time, they were averaging about 15 million passengers a year. They won Best Airport again four years later in 2003. In 2005, Airside C opened, which was the first to be built and finished since 9-11. Now, this would house Southwest Airlines flights, And it is the place where the bathroom that won America's Best Restroom lives. Tampa International Airport was voted best in the U.S. in 2008 by Travel and Leisure. And that's the end of the notable things we need to cover. They don't even mention winning Best Restroom. Like, I mean, that's pretty cool that those, like, those trams, you know those, like, trams when you get on, it's like the ones at Disney, they're like the people movers, like, 
they came up with that for Tampa International. That's kind of cool. Like, yeah, anyway, it's pretty neat. Tampa International Airport has some okay history. You know what I'm saying? Uh, who knew? Congrats, Tampa. You, um, I, I, I don't know if I can bring myself to say that you deserve to win, but you did win. And I, much like someone always has to do in democracy, I come to terms with it and I accept it. Congratulations, Tampa International Airport. You have won America's Best Restroom 2022. And this is a reminder that you can go on the America's Best Restroom website and nominate a a bathroom for the 2023 competition. Stay tuned for our coverage. Thank you guys so much for listening. Sorry that it took so long to um, cover this year's winner. I know you were uh, waiting on pins and needles for that one. Again, not my fault. Uh, if the, if someone from the Sintus Corporation would like to talk with me, uh, maybe we can get to the bottom of what happened. I'd love to know more about your competition and your company and all those things. Feel free to uh, hit me up. Yeah, right. Um, as always, you can follow the show at PrivyCast on all social media. You can follow me. I'm at Owlet7 on pretty much all social media. I got some nonsense going on. You can send us an email, comments, episode suggestions, advice. If Do you need advice? Do you need me to help you wipe your butt? Do you need me to give you advice at, on how to maneuver your loofah? Would you like me to weigh in on the appropriate method by which you would soap yourself? Your hands. Shoot. My bad. All right. Send us an email, privycast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. It, it helps build that community. Um, I want to back up and say something about social. We're on Reddit. You can r slash privycast. Um, that's out there. Feel free to, if you have bathroom things, feel free to post to that community, r slash privycast. Um, it exists now. We're looking for ways in the new year to try to build this community a little bit. We'll see what that has in store. We would love for you to leave us a, a rating. Uh, Spotify is the probably the easiest. You just five star options are preferred, and what that does is it helps people find the show. If you have a little bit of extra time and would like to, leave us a full review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, the five star options are preferred, and say hi in there. Um, if you get something from this show, the those review sections of Apple Podcasts is a good place to put that. It's greatly appreciated. And we will read some of those on the show as they come in. Not a lot of ratings. I'm not going to lie. So feel free to hit those up. Would love to see those. We greatly appreciate it. The, the links to music and sources for information are in the episode description. Thank you to Kevin McLeod and Poddington Bear for the use of music. This has been another episode of Privy. Thank you so much for joining us. And now, as always, don't forget to flush. Thank <laughs> you.